Hello and welcome to conditional, uh, strength of conditional proof in fact. Uh, strength, of, strength of conditional proof is also sometimes called as conditional proof because uh, right now the book which we are using and the convention which we are following says conditional proof as CP and strength of conditional proof you can call it as SCP because uh, this is uh, the acronym for it but sometimes it is also called as conditional proof, just conditional proof. So, because uh, in standard conditional proof, everything subsumes. So, that is the whole understanding. But we will talk about it later. Right now, we need to make the distinction as uh, standard conditional proof. So, what is standard conditional proof? Standard conditional proof is basically, uh, I will say, as the strongest way of solving a question. In fact, every question can be solved using strength conditional proof if you are well versed with it and if you know how to take assumptions and how to put closures. Now I used a couple of words assumptions and closures that is the part of strength and conditional proof. What happens is like suppose if you have premises p1, p2 say again up to pn right and there is a confusion which we need to solve. Now if it would have been a conditional statement right if it could have been having a material implication as the main connective. So you can directly apply the conditional proof as uh, discussed and introduced to you in this course. But uh, or suppose you want to use indirect proof, you can also use it. But you can also use standard conditional proof. What it will say is that you can assume something, right? And this assumption is taken in some line. And then you can solve it with the help of these steps and reach something like suppose you reach say R. Okay. So you need to put a closure and that closure will be A implies R. With the help of this and these steps if you can reach this answer then it is uh, a valid way of deducing uh, a proof from it. Now, how it works or what are uh, its, uh, how it works and uh, how to solve the questions uh, is going to be simpler than the theory because the theory always, as I told you, looks a little bit sketchy, difficult, complicated and so on. But the first thing is what you need to uh, understand is that this is an assumption line and this is your closure line. Okay, so these two things you need to understand that you need to assume something you can use these steps above like the initial premises as given to you in the question and then you can use uh, say these lines and operate with A and try to find out something where whatever you have reached you can put a closure like this like suppose if the question would have been A implies R so you can directly put a uh, say conditional proof and could have used it but you can also use it like this way now uh, there are certain things which you need to understand before you uh, go on to solve this question and or go on to solve the questions on these uh, um, say um, this method uh, the first thing is that how you need to like if you can see this first let me talk about something if you can see this question uh, it could have been directly, you could have directly applied conditional proof. But suppose if this question would have been like negation of A wedge R, right? So you cannot apply conditional proof. But if you take A and you reach R, so you will get A implies R and then it will become negation of A wedge R, right? So again, you will reach the answer. So the idea is that you can assume and then you can prove depending upon what the assumption line is going to be very important what you are assuming how you are concluding and how you are making a strategy to solve this question is going to be very important and that is what we will be learning in this method but before we go further with this let us try to understand that how this loop if if i call this as a loop so how these loops are made right how you need to assume and how you need to put the closure you can make these assumptions many a times as per your requirement in the question you can make more assumptions you can make more than one assumption so how the assumptions can do the assumption line can come like this and the closure line can go like this then another assumption line can come like this 
and another closure line can go like this. Now what needs to be understood is like if you have P1, P2 up to Pn as the initial premises, here your assumption was A and here you got say mm, R. So you wrote A implies R. Here you took T and something. Now the thing which you need to understand is that suppose there was this confusion, whatever is the confusion required. It looks a pretty, uh, say, complicated thing initially, but do not worry, once we will be solving the questions, it will become simpler. Now, the thing which you need to understand is when you are solving this question, right? So, your initial premises are there and then you took A. So, your initial premises along with A is there and you are solving the steps here. You reached R, you put A implies R as the thing which has come out after the closure then these steps are going to be closed for you. You cannot use these steps anymore. Then here on this line number, what are the steps which you have? You have this step, A implies R, you have this step, T, and you have P1, P2 up to Pn. Okay, so you can use this, this, and these steps. These steps you cannot use. These steps you will not be able to use in this proof. So similarly, if you have reached, say, Z, so you will say t implies z so this step will be closed right so this is the first thing which you need to understand that once the loop is closed the steps inside this is closed like we use also a lot of programming and so on right so if we have say opened a say for something if we are making suppose like uh, if you know this this is a uh, command used for making bold, right? And then we are writing something here. So as soon as we put this bracket, then this impact of this is going to be closed here. So similarly, we have put the closure here. So the impact is here up to here. This was the impact. This is what we wanted to create, like whatever we will write here. So it will come in bold letters, right? So if it is, <clears throat> if it was bold here, so it will be very, very bold here, right? Because it will be uh, giving the output like this, right? So this thing will come, right? So this idea, you need to understand that what is happening is that if I want to make something from this, so I have put a environment here or I have put a code here. Similarly, I have assumed something here and I have put the closure here. And with this, I have reached this result. And once I have reached this result, so after that, I will not be able to use this impact because as soon as you have put this bracket and this has been made a bold text. So after that, you cannot, uh, you, the impact of this is not going to be there. You cannot use these things again, unless you write it again or you take it again. So this is the understanding. So. The first thing which you should understand is that the looping has to be uh, separate because this is a separate loop, this is a separate loop. There is another way in which you can make a loop. And what is that loop or how to make that loop? That loop will be like this. Like if you start a loop and you are following, then you thought that there is a requirement for another loop. You can start again, right? So this loop is also following. Now, this loop has to close first and this loop will close after this. This is something which is permissible. This is permitted. Fine. But if you are making a loop like this, this is not permitted. So, because th this will give syntax error. If you understand uh, logic and if you understand programming, if you understand any damn thing which we use in some kind of logical uh, inquiries and analysis, this is a syntax error because if this loop has started and it has not closed, uh, uh, the loop inside, if it has not uh, closed, then the outside loop cannot close. That is the understanding. So the outside loop will close only after the inside loop has closed, right? or the loops can be separated, but this kind of looping is not possible. And whatever steps are here will be all closed as soon as this loop will be closed. So that is something which we have picked up from the uh, first question as well, or the first example as well. So uh, 
it looks a little bit sketchy or it looks a little bit difficult initially that how we are going to uh, solve uh, say uh, questions with strengthen conditional proof but uh, with passage of time and with more uh, questions which we will be solving you will see that it has become simpler or it is something which you can um, uh, solve or uh, which is something which is easier for you to understand as well and once you will be mastering this step that is what i am saying that once you will be mastering these steps then it will become fairly simple for you to solve the questions now we have taken a lot of uh, proofs uh, or say a lot of uh, theory and all these things let us try to understand it with the help of an example or with the help of a couple of examples so that it becomes easier for us also to solve and understand that how we need to uh, go for it right uh, let us take a question from your book only uh, the question is um, we can take a question like this a implies b this is the first line therefore a implies a dot b now this is something which we have to prove now if we uh, we know that we can use conditional proof here but we also will see like how to do certain conditional proof so what i what is my strategy is that my strategy is to assume a and create a dot b fine so once i will put closure it will become a implies a dot b this is the understanding with which i am planning to do this question this is fairly simple question but just try to understand so i will assume this is the way you put the assumption line so you write a here because this is something which you can assume anything on this earth right so i have assumed a so i can also write it as scp assumption or if you do not write it here but if you have drawn this arrow that also clarifies that you are doing scp so now this step and this step i will get b so this is first second mode exponents on step number 4 i can conjoin them a dot b 2 3 conjunction so i have got my requirement so on step number 5 i can write a implies a dot b so this will be from 2 to 4 scp now as you can see on this line this is not 2 comma 4 this is from 2 to 4 this big dash or this double dash actually represents that it is from 2 to 4 scp so i have applied from this step to this step 2 to 4 scp rather than 2 and 4 scp right so this is the understanding and this is the way it is written so you see that this question becomes fairly simple but this could have been solved by uh, conditional proof as well so why to be bothered about scp okay let us see some more questions to understand that uh, whether scp is making our life simpler or scp is powerful or not right because we need to solve more questions we need to solve more things in order to appreciate something now let us take a question again from your book and this question goes like this here also you can apply scp but let uh, scp as well it is a wedge b implies c wedge d implies e therefore a implies c dot d implies e so this is the question which is uh, uh, our second requirement now you can apply uh, scp in this question uh, cp also in this question and solve it but let us try to see uh, how to use scp because once you will learn scp the good thing about that will be and that is something which we will be discussing in the next video that if we have learned scp then what is going to be the advantage the advantage is that once we will be knowing about scp and we know how to use scp the advantage will be that we can apply scp also on questions which are not implication based 
and we will be in the later part of the syllabus we will be also proving identities that means we can prove de morgan's law we can prove uh, the rule of distribution we can prove the rule of uh, exportation and so on and those can be only solved using scp so we will learn those things as well but right now let us try to understand that how to go for this question like uh, if i take this first and then take this and create this so i will have c dot d implies e and then because the idea of solving this question will be i will take a then i will take c dot d and then i should get e so i will make c dot d implies e and then i will put a closure so i will get a implies c dot d implies e so this way the question will be solved that is the idea of solving this question now how to go for it how how because you know that what are the assumptions which you need to take and by virtue of that how we will be solving it so let us try this question as well uh, line number 2 we take a as the assumption line so you can write it as scp assumption okay uh, line number 3 you can make it a wedge b second addition on line number 4 uh, you take c dot d this is going to be another assumption so this is again scp assumption you can also write it as assumption 1 and assumption 2 that also you can do depending upon yourself so from here you can simplify c 4 simplification on line number 6 what you can do c wedge d so on fifth you have added on line number 7 what you can do you will uh, because you have uh, you have a wedge b so with a wedge b you can come out with c wedge d implies e this will be first third mode exponents so on line number 8 using c wedge d you will get e so this will be 7 6 mode exponents so here you can put the closure so this will be c dot d implies e this is 4 to 8 scp and since you have got this now you put the closure here so on line number 10 you will get a implies c dot d implies e now you put these brackets here and you can write it from 2 to 9 scp so this is the answer which you wanted and this is the answer which you have also got so your task becomes easy however as i told you that this question could have been solved by cp as well and you can try it with cp as well and you will see that this question will be solved but this is a new technique it's basically an advanced technique you can call it c++ if you are using c as the uh, conditional proof then this will be c++ but then this is having or this is going to have a lot of advantage which we will be discussing in the next video thank you